to pay the bills or grow the business necessarily, the customers do. So I needed to ask the customers, the right audience, what they wanted from us. And you know what? I already knew the answer. Okay, so they wanted a better website to order from. And we were going, this was a little bit before website, Facebook, ads, all that stuff took off. But I knew they wanted a better, they wanted a better website so they could be in their PJs instead of at someone's house making nice with the cousin and buying the token item for $20. They wanted to be in their PJs experiencing the creative process. I love to experience putting fabric together and a zipper together and aligning together. See my face lights I'm talking about. It. Like that's what I love to do and I wanted to offer that to people. So I knew they wanted a better website experience. So I got to dry up and then I got to do my favorite thing. I got to take action. So I poured over website possibilities, met with three different people, and the first <laughs> the first interview that I had was a gentleman, Travis, who showed up with his son and I was like, he didn't even say one sentence to me. I was like, hired. Anybody that prioritizes their kids, like I prioritize my kids and my job is hired. And he was the best behaved little guy. And as soon as he came and laid out kind of an ABC, so it's web concentrated, you all need an awesome website, that's who to go to. Um, he laid out an ABC and I, of course, am the action person and I thought, I want the, the most expensive option basically because I know exactly what those customers want. I did ask them, by the way, even knowing that's exactly what they would say. They said they would love it. I said, I want to do this because I know I will make up all the sales of my previous learning experience and this website if I just get this up and going. And sure enough, within six months, it had paid for the catalog and itself because of all the orders. It's just an awesome experience. Not that was kind of big, expensive <laughs> uh, learning. So um, if you have a problem in your business, whether it's internal with staff or it's external, are you asking the right audience? It's so easy to solve the problem in front of us and quick buy the product or change the procedure or buy the new equipment that you'll be faster and more efficient or solve this little tiny problem. But, and, and believe me, I've screwed this up so many times since, will it improve things for your customer, the one paying you to do what you love? Will it change things for them? Will it improve things for them? Ask your customers, and believe me, we know they have opinions, so they will tell you what they want but usually it's helping you to succeed. And then again, to avoid large expensive learning experiences, ask yourself, is this really the problem? Or is this the symptom of the problem? Because I could have made a better catalog. I could have said, oh, okay, well, I didn't like all these things. So let's just make a better catalog. Well, Nick was not gonna sell me another cow, so I had to figure out a different <laughs> process. <laughs> so keep asking and circling. It's worth the time to dig deeper before taking massive action, which maybe you're really good at, but it's worth, it's worth it to dig deeper and ask what is the problem, not what is, what is the root of the problem, not just a thing that you can solve, like the symptom. And ask yourself who will benefit from this new solution. Are they the ones that, who asked for it and are they the ones ultimately paying for it? Will it benefit them? So another situation that has caused me to take massive action in a direction I didn't know I was going, but I'm so glad that it has and it wasn't nearly as expensive. Good news! <laughs> I do pickups and drop-offs with my employees and my seamstresses every single Wednesday morning at Hy-Vee on 10th Street at 8.30 a.m. I mean, you guys, you can set your clock by me. Like, it's going to happen. And I grew up West River, so the only time there's a lot of cars is if an old guy accidentally forgot that I'm actually locked. Like, we didn't want to lock cars. So, yes, I leave my car unlocked. Do not tell my husband it's still going that way. Um, and then we just exchange. So they maybe have the lining of the purse. By the way, I'm still one of my own contractors, so I still love to do this in my process as well and lead. So I get the lining and I give them next week's linings and then they sew them. This exchange happens. Well, this morning was different. It was June. All four of my kiddos were home with me and so they all got to come along for Aaron Wednesdays. Everything that's appointment related or anything outside of our farmhouse, which is where I want to be the rest of my life, happens on Wednesday mornings. So we were up, dressed, beds made, and the car packed, and the list in hand. You know what I'm talking about, the list. <laughs> and the clear mapping, which by the way, when you live, when you live in East River, and then you come to East River, I'm like, oh my gosh, the driving, like to make sure you got it all strategic. So I had the list in hand. The seamstress I was meeting was new to my staff. She was a mother of three, and she was really excited to, excited to sew with her little ones nearby. <coughs> something I totally relate to. She texted me earlier to confirm the time of 8.30, and I cheerfully replied back, yep, see you soon. It was 8 a.m. We rolled into the parking lot, and we were just getting our things together to get inside. Then she, too, rolled in with her kiddos in tow. 
Um, I have to explain this in so much detail because do not judge. You will understand where I'm going with this, okay? She was wearing her PJs, her sunglasses, her hair was undone, her kiddos looked the same, PJs on, barely rolling out. They were cheery, but they were clearly not excited about mommy's new early gig on a, on a summer morning. So she took one look at me, ready for the day, dressed, face on, girls, my girls' hair were done, I had the list, and she said in exasperation, oh my gosh, tell me this is not how you are. <laughs> <laughs> so I quickly replied, oh no, 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 we have mornings like that too. And then as immediately as I said it, I felt this large punch in my gut because I was being falsely humble. The truth is, I was ready for a day. I was up and I had been up since five and I was ready to tackle my job and take massive action on the things that I had prioritized and loved doing. And so, but I also knew that I could help her. I'm just doing what I love and there's no, there's nothing magic that I'm doing that I couldn't teach her. These things I must do in order to succeed, I knew, and so I could totally coach her to accomplish these things or the priorities that she wanted to also, along with this new sewing gig. I realized I had something to give to help her. Mm -hmm coaching so I could coach women all over on how to do their roles and do it with joy, particularly with joy. So I, like I said, wasn't smoking something special or taking a magic, get a done pill. I was just very clear on my goals and my roles and my priorities. And for whatever reason, it always just came really naturally to me. I knew what I wanted, so I knew I had to get my stuff in a group so that I could do it and accomplish it, and I knew I could help her. So I, oops. You know when you go off script? Um, so I did. I started writing down everything I did during a day. Because I, my background is actually radio and TV broadcasting, which is a whole other thing. So I'm using it. Thank you, Grandma Christie. I got the degree. I'm still using it. Um, I started writing down everything I could in script form, in outline form, in the 30 and 60 second blocks if you've ever wrote for radio. Um, or podcasting, um, I started writing everything I could and I thought that would be the easiest platform because I know how to get on a microphone and tell them what to do. So how did I run my roles in order? How did I serve God? How do I love Nicholas? How do I nurture our four and run my growing business? And I had answers and I knew about action, remember, so I knew how to get started. So I started the podcast, it's called The Encourager, and I started reading everything that I had written down and how I get it done and how I also do it with joy, which is the important part of the puzzle piece. Then, people still kept asking me in my booth, like, I still, like, how are you doing this? I just need, like, a tangible thing. So I thought, okay, I'm going to write a book. But not after, I really thought, is this going to be a learning experience or what? And there was no cows involved, so I got to write the book. And I really narrowed down what I was doing as four systems. And so the four systems are food, family, me, and work. If you think about your life, most things fall into those four systems. So this allows you to really understand what system is broken instead of thinking that all of my life is chaotic, everything is falling apart, you're on the floor, like nothing is going to work. You can really pinpoint what system is broken and just work on that one system. It doesn't have to be that everything is broken, just one system. So in this particular seamstress, she and I worked on her family system to help improve her methods so that she could use her new job as a blessing and not a curse. So we just worked on her family system and figuring out what kind of things she could do and when. So while it's very good to be humble, are you being falsely humble about exactly what you are actually really good at? And then can you coach others on how to get there as well? Or even leverage it for your business, like just admitting, you know what, I'm, I'm really darn good at this. How many mistakes or learning experiences could you help people, employees, fellow business owners avoid because you happen to do it very well? It just comes naturally to you. It's great to share mistakes so we can learn, as you previously heard, but what else can you share that you are extraordinarily good at? And in my defense, I wasn't consciously being falsely humble. I was trying to be relatable. But getting my things and priorities came naturally to me and I worked on them every single day and I knew I could do the same for her. Something may come naturally to you that you aren't even aware of, but your employees or your families or your spouses are. It sounds like phrases of like, oh well, you know Becca, she is always it's probably something you're naturally good at. Or it says, you know so-and-so, they can really excel at, or don't underestimate. Those are all cues for something you're naturally gifted at. And did you, uh, another one is, did anyone ever tell you you're really good at? Those are great. And when you spot it in somebody, would you please just say it? And like, avoid some of these learning experiences? Say, did you know you're just really great at popping questions up? Rachel, whenever I've seen you in all the different 
jobs or roles, there's like you have a woo factor, people are naturally drawn to you, you can get on a microphone and encourage a whole group to do burpees if you wanted. Like you just have this natural way of community. So tell them that so that they know that and that maybe they can use it in their own lives or just use it as a warm fuzzy. My favorite tell all for something that you're naturally good at is, whoa, how did you do that? It's so overwhelming to that person and you're like, I'm so simple. Like, I had a hard time writing my podcast at first because I was like, oh, well, I just do it. Like, I, what, what motivates you? Uh, a paycheck <laughs> and food on the table. You know, like, in the beginning, of course, as an entrepreneur. So that's a good tell all is, whoa, 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 how did you do that? That is something that you're naturally gifted at. So I challenge you today. Did you, in fact, learn your lesson or did you just solve the symptom of whatever that was? Did you just make it better? And are you asking the right audience? The ones that are helping you to do what you love. And did you dig deep enough? Like sometimes you need to get on the floor and cry it out. Like did you dig really deep enough into it? I do not need to make another 10K mistake. And are you being falsely humble about something that could really bless people? Or change your bottom line if you just owned it and professed. Okay, you know what? I am really good at this and I'm going to teach people how to do this or I'm going to leverage it for my own business and just own it. Those are my two challenges for you. Are there any questions? <laughs>